Hey you folks, Quilly Keen here and welcome to another episode of our Unity 2D physics game tutorial where we make a simple physics based game that is suitable for both desktop computers and also mobile devices. In the last episode we uh, brought in our graphics, we introduced a little bit of basic physics and this episode we're going to want to go ahead and interact with this box. Imagine as this box goes by we can sort of click it and say drag it to make it move places. So let's have this box do stuff. Now there's two ways we can do this. One, we could put a script on the box which has a function for on mouse down or, or something of that nature. So it will get an event when we click on it. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to use sort of a centralized mouse management script so that every time the mouse button gets clicked down, the mouse will then, that script will then check to see if we are clicking on anything underneath it. There's a couple of advantages and disadvantages to both ways. It's kind of a six of one, half a dozen of the other. These days I've really come into really liking a single centralized script for it because then what you can do is you can handle anything that might require you to have multiple mouse modes. Like maybe sometimes you're going to want some sort of mode in the game where um, clicking on a box doesn't cause it to fire its particular event. Um, and rather than have every single script of everything that can be clicked on, check to see what mode our mouse is in. Um, for example, if you're playing a, a real-time strategy game, and when you're in a build-building kind of mode, when you've selected a building, you're you know, kind of dragging it around and trying to figure out where to drop it, you don't want your mouse to interact with the units underneath it, for example. So by having a centralized mouse manager, it can make decisions based on whatever mouse mode you're in. That's not really going to apply to our example here, although it's not hard to imagine a situation where we could have like a pause menu, some sort of menu, and when we're in the menu and we're clicking on options in the menu, we don't want the boxes behind it to, to start firing events. Now, depending on exactly how your, um, your GUI is set up and things, it might swallow those moves anyway, but anyway, let's, let's go ahead and move on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object, create an empty game object, which I often like to do. And this is going to be sort of the centralized object for all my scripts, all my managers. And in fact, I often like to do something like underscore scripts. Now in the unity hierarchy as of what 4.5, I think, um, the hierarchy can be sorted, uh, for through a variety of different ways. I quite like just alphabetical listing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on alphabetical sorting again. And then by starting through this uh, with an underscore is it'll always ensure that it's at the top of the list. And I quite like to do that with my scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new script. Again, I can do that either by adding a component or I could just create one over here by right clicking or by pulling this little menu over here. We'll add a new C, uh, C sharp script and we're going to call it the mouse manager script. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to my scripts object over here. And we'll get that to go. So what we want to do is wait for mono develop to start. And there we go. So we want to handle mouse clicks. And the reason I'm doing it in here is if we, um, in the update, we can check here if there have been mouse clicks. So I don't think we need to start. At least we don't need to start right now. So let's go ahead and get the update. We should talk about the difference between fixed update and update because there's two variations here. Update runs every single frame. So if you're running 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, or 150 frames per second, this will run every single frame. With fixed update, it will run once per tick of the physics engine. And that is determined if we go into our edit menu and we go project settings and I think time. There we go. You've got this fixed time step, which always defaults to 0 0.02, which means your physics engine ticks 50 times per second, right? 50 times this equals one second. So 50 times per second is how often the physics engine ticks. This physics engine basically runs at 50 FPS, which is fine. And so this will get be, be called 50 times per second. If you've got a slightly slower or faster computer, what can sometimes happen is it might skip frames. So these two will not run at the same rate because it's easy to imagine two situations. One, where the graphics are so complicated that in the amount of time it takes to draw one frame, we're going to have to run the physics loop two or maybe even three times. If your frame rate drops below, say, 20 frames per second, then it'll draw one frame and then it'll call fixed update once, twice, and then a third time before it goes back to drawing another frame. On the other hand, if you've got very simplistic graphics and no vertical sync, you could have a visual frame rate that is hundreds of times per second. Um, and what it'll mean, that'll mean is this update function will run several times before next fixed update. 
And this has certain implications. We can see that quite quickly or clearly. If I turn on the stats over here and hit play, well, because by default, Unity turns on VSync, uh, right now it's capping it to 70 FPS, which I think my monitor is a 70 Hertz monitor, which is, I think was what's going on over here. Um, so it's capping it there. So every now and again, every second or third um, physics frame, it's rendering a second visual frame. So there's a slight difference. Okay, so why does it matter for us one way or another? Well, anything you do that involves moving an object in a physics-y kind of way, any object that has a collider or a rigid body or anything like that, really that should happen in fixed update because that's when the physics engine will properly update, will recalculate collisions and so on and so forth. If you do those movement updates in update, every now and again, it might be slightly weird. Usually it won't be a problem, but technically it's better to do it there. On the other hand, anything that involves a purely visual change, any kind of user interface interaction, or anything where you want to read inputs and outputs, you want to do an update. Because, now here's one of the differences. If you do something like input.getMouse button zero, this, okay, get mouse button zero, this checks the left mouse button. It returns true if the left mouse button is being held down and false if the left mouse button is not being held down. This you can easily run anywhere because it just checks the present state. But the other variant is get mouse button down. What this does is it returns true if the mouse button was pushed down this frame. So this, if you're holding it down, it's only the first time, the, the very moment you click down on the mouse button, that this will return true. As you're holding down the mouse button, this will no longer return true. And if you do it in fixed update, it could potentially miss that event. You could have a check in here for uh, get mouse button down in fixed update, and you might literally, someone might click the mouse button down, and this will still return false because it sort of missed that event somewhere. But if you do it in update, that's where you would always get the proper behavior. So sometimes you end up with this hybrid where you use both, um, both functions. In update, you check to see if something should be moving, and then in fixed update, you, you do it. So something like, you know, bool, yes, move equals false, and then you do something like if get mouse button down, then set yes, move equals true, and then in fixed update, you do a if yes move equals true, then do something and then set yes move to be back to false. Something like that. Here we're not really, it's not going to be terribly important one way or another. Um, although, well, that's not true. We are going to want to do this if get mouse button down. So what I'm picturing is in our game, this box, let me hide the stats, this box that is going to come in from the left-hand side, I want to be able to click on it and then basically have the box start to behave in a physics -y, physics -y way or even attach itself to the mouse. For now, all I'm going to do is when we click on the box, I'm going to have the gravity kick back on, right? Right now we have this box not affected by gravity. Oh, it's actually also kinematic. So we don't want it to be kinematic. We don't want it to be affected by gravity now. When we click on it, we want that gravity scale to become one. You apply these changes. So if get mouse button down, if we've clicked down the mouse button, we want to figure out, okay, we clicked, but on what? What did we click? So we want to do, how do we determine what we clicked on? We do this by doing a ray cast. We shoot a ray out of the camera in the direction of the mouse and see what we hit. This is a very common technique in 3D games and also comes up in 2D games, like the way we're doing it here. Again, instead of doing it this way, I could have a script on our box that responds to on mouse button down. That would also work in this particular uh, example, but you know, I'm doing it this way, mostly so we can show off ray casting. So we've got a, uh, a class called physics 2D, which has a function called raycast. It requires an origin and a direction. It needs to know where it's shooting out of and in what direction it's going. Now, in a classic sort of 3D situation, so if we're using physics.raycast, normally what you would do is you would use the origin, you would use the camera, something like uh, camera.main.transform.position. You would shoot it from the middle of the camera and then you would give it a direction, which if you're doing a first person shooter, you would just be shooting directly out of the front of the camera. Or if you were doing, um, if you, 
the position of the mouse is what you cared about. Like in a first person shooter, you just shoot out the like the little the, the, the literal middle of the screen. So um, the direction would just be the forward direction of the camera, something like that. But if we're doing something like a real time strategy game, we would need to modify this direction based on where the mouse is. So um, that we're going to do something very similar here in physics 2D. But in the 2D physics, because we have an orthographic projection, the origin is not going to be the camera. We could do something with the origin being the camera and the direction maybe being the mouse, but that wouldn't really work at all. What we want the origin to be here is literally the position of the mouse. And our direction will be nothing. Because in the 2D system, these ray casts, you have to imagine, they start from a particular point and they always go off in some sort of direction like this. Okay, so if we did the same thing as we did in 3D, where we use the position of the camera and then we use the position of mouse, it would shoot a ray out this way, which means it could hit something in a really awkward position. In the 2D system, what you do is wherever the mouse is, you, you originate a ray from there with a direction of zero, zero. It has no direction whatsoever. Or another way to picture it is almost like the direction will be straight into the screen, directly into the screen along the Z axis, which is sort of kind of what's going on here. So. All right, we need the position of the mouse. Let's go ahead and use some uh, temporary placeholders here. We're going to use a vector. Now, here's the thing. This 2D raycast wants vector twos. These are vectors with only an X and a Y. On our input, we can get the mouse position. Mouse position. But you'll notice it's a vector three. It gives you an X, a Y, and a Z. Well, the Z we really don't need. So how do we convert a vector three to a vector two? Well, we just have to pick which axes we're using. We can do this pretty easily. We're gonna make a new vector two called mouse pause 2D is going to be equal to a new vector two. The X of it is going to be the mouse position not X and the Y of it is gonna be the mouse position not Y and we ignore the Z component of the mouse. I th think this works. Ah, uh, no, we're going to have to do something else soon. It's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. And then we're going to make a new vector too for the, um, the direction. And this is literally just going to be the zero vector. It's going to be a zero comma zero vector. And now if we feed that in here, and there's no reason you have to have these temporary placeholders, but we're doing it to be a little bit more explicit here. If we feed into this ray cast, this will tell us if we hit something. Note that term. We're, it's going to tell us if we hit something, not what we hit. So what do we do to, uh, to resolve that? Um, oh, no, it's not true. I'm lying to you. The 3D version returns a Boolean if it hit anything. Then you've got to pass it a special variable to get in extra information. Here, we get a Raycast 2D object. Or no, sorry, that's wrong. We get a Raycast hit 2D object with information about what we hit. Now, if we didn't hit anything, hit will be null. Otherwise, it won't be null. So if hit not equals null, we clicked on something that has a collider. Now note, this is a physics engine thing. It will only hit things that have a collider of some kind. So we've gone and hit something that has a collider. What do we do with it? Well. Let, we basically, we want to find out if the thing that we hit has, I don't know, a rigid body. We want to give it a gravity scale of one. Right now, that's all we're doing. That sounds pretty simple. Maybe we'd want to check, you know, what the name of it is, or maybe if it had a particular tag, or was on a layer, or all kinds of different things. For now, it's going to be good enough. If it has a rigid body 2D, let's just set its gravity scale to one. Okay, so if, so actually... We can just grab a copy of it. Eh, how do I want to do it? It's fine. Hit has a game object on it. No. Hit has a collider. It tells us a collider. That collider has a reference to all the game object stuff, including the rigid body 2D that's attached to the collider. So if the hit collider rigid body is not null, so if it has a rigid body, then we set gravity scale to be equal to 1. Okay, let's see how that works out. So we're going to hit play, and we're going to try to click on this object. Oh, we get an error. What's going on? Object reference not set to instance of an object. Really? 
hit dot hits not null, but hit dot collider is. That doesn't make any sense, does it? I was gonna attach rigid body. Hang on a sec. Debug.log hit. I'm just gonna log out a few things here. Dot collider dot rigid body. These should not be null. Okay, we're getting some information. Okay, well, a few things. One, I know that this is not correct because we actually have to convert this from global space to world space. I didn't realize that hit is not necessarily null. If hit is not null and hit.collider is not null, then we're going to do something. That's weird. I really thought, hmm, I should check the uh, the reference on this. I thought this would return null if we didn't hit anything at all. But apparently hit is not null, but it's a collider. So right now, we're trying to click and nothing is happening. And the reason is the mouse position in 2D, this is the mouse position of our screen coordinates. I'll give you an example over here. Let's do a debug.log of our mouse position. And then we'll get rid of these debug log entries over here. Now when we click, watch the log and it'll tell us exactly where we're clicking. You see these numbers? These are huge numbers. We know our world space. This is the zero, zero point of our world right over here. Well, that's not what we're getting. This should be zero, zero, but it's not. What is zero, zero? It's down here. And that's because our mouse position is in screen coordinates. So it's based really on the size of our screen. So down here it's zero, zero, and up here it's gonna be 467 by four. So right now my screen is basically 450 by 450. If I make the screen wider and then I click over here, you can see it's like 1100 pixels. So we need to convert from pixels into world space because we're not shooting our array at the right position. Because when I click in the middle here and it's about 250 by 250, the ray is being shot out, you know, 250 coordinates away, like way over here, which is not what we want. So we need to convert from screen coordinates to world coordinates, which we can do really easy because our camera dot main has a function screen to world point, which is what we're going to want to use. Now note that this is a vector three. Let's change things around a little bit here. We're going to feed it. We're going to change our code a bit. We're going to take our input dot mouse position and feed it into there. Then we're going to, this returns a vector three, which is mouse world pause 3D. And then we need our, our mouse 2D version in world coordinates. So we're going to use this as our X and our Y. Let's see what happens now. So now if I put the mouse in the middle and click, there we go. And what's that warning I keep getting on compile? Am I doing a check that's not good? Come on, actually like recompile, please. Hmm, strange, okay. There we go. It's properly clicking on the object. We'll hit play, we'll click there. So when we click on the box, it sets the gravity of the box, the gravity scale of the box to one. Now, what's most important with this step as well, the screen to world point, is it becomes extremely important as we move the camera around. When we move the camera over here, so, okay, here's, here's the thing to remember. The bottom left corner, when I was clicking on the mouse, that was the zero, zero coordinate, right? Well, no matter where the camera is, the bottom left corner of the screen is always the zero, zero coordinate in the screen space, which is why it becomes extremely important to convert from one to the other. So there you have it there. But now we can click on the box. Again, we could have done it slightly differently with the on mouse, uh, on mouse click event. But by doing this, we get a little bit more control over things. So we we're doing that. That's great. That's kind of step number one. Now, in theory, maybe this change here should happen in the fixed update. I don't think so. That, that's going to be okay. Yeah, it affects the physics system in a sense, but it doesn't involve moving anything. We're just saying, hey, on the next physics tick, whenever that happens, make sure that the gravity is turned on for this object. That's all. That's all we care about. On the next physics tick, make sure you apply the gravity. So that's why we don't need that to be in the physics update. 
All right, so that's that's step one. That's pretty good. But what I really want to do is get to the point where I can drag this object around. Wouldn't that be fun? So let's go and talk about exactly how we might do that. What does it mean to drag an object around with the mouse? Like we can do it here in Unity. So what does that mean? Well, when we click on the object and then we move the mouse, every frame we just move the object to be where the mouse is. Could we do that? Yeah, pretty easily actually. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some sort of placeholder, like uh, we're going to grab, um, I don't know, grab a rigid body, I guess. It doesn't really matter what we grab, but let's say we've got a rigid body 2D. This is the grabbed object, okay? Which we don't have to be explicit here, but I will be explicit. I will say the grabbed object, which is going to be null to start off with. When we click on an object, instead of setting its gravity scale to one, what if we just say, hey, we just grab this thing. We grab this object, and that's all we're going to do. And then in our fixed update, if grabbed object is not equal to null, move the object with the mouse. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we know how to get the mouse position in, um, in the world, right? If we copy this line, this is takes the mouse position, converts it through the camera, and gives it a coordinate of the mouse in 3D space. Note that the Z axis of this might not be right. I believe by default this will give us a Z of minus 10. The reason is our camera is at minus 10 on the Z axis. So when we click, the mouse position is based on that minus 10. It's on the same plane as the camera. So we want to ignore the, the Z coordinates, but we already know we want to do that. In fact, we know that vector two, well, it's this next line, it's the mouse position in 2D space, right? We get the 3D space version. The 2D space version is exactly the same, but we've dropped off the Z. So what if we just take our grabbed object and note that because I'm going to be moving the object, I'm doing it in fixed update, which is just a better idea. Grab object, which is a, uh, a rigid body, and it's got a position. What if we just set the position to mouse pause 2D? Because un unless I'm wrong, the position is a vector 2. Yeah. So if we just set the position of the grabbed object to the mouse position in 2D, what would that do for us? Well, let's hit play. Look at that. We can drag this around. Now, it's sort of weird because the way it... No. And it's still a physics object. So even though we're moving the position... We can still sort of do collisions in kind of odd ways. It'll clip oddly because we're setting the position. So it'll sort of intersect in, in weird and uncomfortable ways. And then stop being dragged. Actually, don't know why it stopped sort of following me. That was a, that was a little bit weird. Oh, it's not liking something, though. I think the reason it's bugging out there and getting kind of weird is because this sort of teleporting of objects of actual physics enabled objects. This is not a rigid, uh, um, sorry, this is not a kinematic rigid body. If it were a kinematic rigid body, then that would be a little bit more realistic. When you're just teleporting the object around, boom, 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 and ignoring, we're, we're patently overriding the collision behavior. We're doing this and we're forcing it in. Well, that doesn't make any sense for a true rigid body. But if it were a kinematic rigid body, then that would be perfectly valid. So with this particular kind of dragging, that would be that. Although note, I keep saying dragging, but this is not the sort of dragging we like, is it? Because I'm clicking, I click down, and then I've released the mouse. What, what has happened is the object has sort of glued itself to my mouse, rather than me being holding it down and dragging. And so that's not necessarily what we want. How do we override that? Well, right now, it's when the mouse button goes down, we attach the object to our mouse. What if we have another thing? If input dot get mouse button up, when we release the mouse button, then what do we do? Well, what if we just set the grabbed object at that point to be equal to null? Well, that means nothing will get updated over here. So if I hit play, I'm going to click down. It's attached. I'm going to release. It's no longer attached. And it actually keeps its old velocity, which is kind of interesting. Maybe? It's not what we're looking to do. In the next episode, what we're going to look at is instead of changing its position directly, what if we start to affect its velocity? And I think you will find it feels much, much better. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.